Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso. We're live at SABC3. And as you know, this particular thing with energy, because now we've got Chef Clem in the kitchen and we've got Jesse, a 12-year-old future leader and president of this country. Yes. Just saying, with energy, you guys ready? Yes. It is the culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding. You also have to have that fist there, just the kind of extra power. You know what I mean? Now, a little earlier, we, we dealt with a, a variety of certain things like, I mean, of course, butternut soup, creamy, beautiful. But you can call us right now if you have any culinary conundrums we have the man for it his name is chef clem zero two one double one zero triple five two now before we go anywhere we had a little thing that popped up while we were having a kitchen break and that is around frozen fish mm -hmm. and this is somebody that said frozen fish sometimes you know you, you dry out fish but this person's family member has a little problem with it becoming too watery can you help it was cindy actually cindy yes we got you all right the thing about fish it's an, um, the technology around sourcing fish is so amazing. Obviously, with Willys, everything's sustainable. When those ships actually get the fish in, they flash freeze them immediately. It's locks in the goodness. You're getting it at its freshest, freshest point. Okay. Then you get home. It's time to make a dish. Yes. What do you do now? Okay. You take it out the box. Yep. What's your next step? The next step is to thaw it out. How do you do that? I just leave it on the counter. That's the right thing to do. Yeah. But what people have, I've seen people do, and I need to just like, I'm not calling out names, okay? Yeah. But they either throw it in water, which no. you shouldn't do, because then it actually absorbs more water. Yes. I've seen people pour boiling water over it. I, I've seen people microwave. I've seen people microwave uh -huh. it. Don't do that. The fish will thaw out pretty quickly. We leave it at room counter. Yes. If, obviously, if it's winter, it'll take a little bit longer. But let it, let it thaw out on the counter. And that way, it's going to come back to its natural texture. It's pat a little dry, and then you're good to go. So chances are you've tried to thaw your fish out in water. It's taken out all the excess moisture. As you cook it in the pan, it starts to steam. Yes. Bubble, water comes out. You're not getting the best out of the ingredients. So fish, always, always, and seafood in general, and meat, Throw it out at room temperature, don't put it in water, let it do its thing naturally. That's do its the trick. thing. I like that. And on the counter, don't try and force it. I mean, it happens quite often. And I think also just, I, I would do an oven grid as well sometimes so that the water drops instead of it sitting in its yeah. own water and, and absorbing more. There we go. Full of knowledge. I'm waiting for this thing to ring. Okay. I just, I want, I want Jesse to be a part of the. Yes! Are you ready? Are you ready, Jesse? Okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay no, no, no. You want, you want him to answer? Let, Jesse, can I Jesse, go answer, answer the, phone. the phone. This is the best thing ever. Just go, go for it. Hello? Hello, Jesse speaking. Hello? Yes! Hello? Okay, we're putting you on speaker, putting you on speaker. Yeah, speaker phone. Okay, you can put it down, Jesse. Thank you. That was brilliant, by the way. Best secretary ever. Whoa. Hello, <laughs> welcome to the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. How can I help you? Hi, um, I just want to know about pickle fish. Would you like a recipe, ma'am? Yeah, the recipe that Kim did last year was fantastic. Ooh. Yes, the last week's it recipe, was, it, it was, was fantastic. Very good. Are you talking about last year's one or last week's one? No, um, um, I did the one quickly last, last year, but I'd like to have the recipe that you did last year. Okay, okay. Right, last year. This is an adaptation of the one we did last year. Still going to get an amazing, amazing pickle help. fish. By the way, can I just say thank you to everyone that prepared the pickled prawn recipe. I'm seeing all those images come through. It is pretty, pretty amazing. Pickled prawns pickled are prawns. the future. No, okay. No, it's a thing, eh? It's, it's such a thing. thing. Thank you. Let's talk about pickle fish. All right. So, essentially, and we had this conversation earlier, this came out of necessity when fish needed to be preserved. And the best way to do that, and we know vinegar preserves things, but then we're like, wait, wait, wait. We can add flavor to that vinegar, and we can actually make it so much more. And that's where pickled fish actually came from. And I love pickled fish so much. Let's talk about how it all starts. So it starts with the fish. Now we know it can be mussels, it can be prawns, it can be whatever seafood you want, even meat. I've seen some stuff being done, but the, es the essence of it is that pickling liquid. Okay. So the spices go in. First, actually, I'm going to add the sugar. The pickle is a perfect balance between sweet and tangy, sweet yes. and sour. Essentially, it's a carried sweet and sour sauce. That balance between your vinegar and the sugar, that gives you the levels, right? I like mine to kind of like, not to make me go, but I want to taste if there is vinegar in there, but I don't want it to be too sour. It's got to be perfect. So is that a taste thing? I mean, is there a calculated quantity of sugar to vinegar ratio? I kind of say go two parts vinegar, one part sugar, and right. start from there. Okay, taste cool. what that tastes like. And then you can kind of tweak okay. it a bit. Add more sugar if you want, a little bit more vinegar if you want. Okay, the spice is going in. We've got a Cape Malay curry spice mix from Willie's. But again, use a good garam masala. So many people in Cape Town, they, I've found out now, 
how, like, they are so intense with the carry spice mixes. And if Durban, I mean, Durban, forget it. You guys are at a whole other level. <laughs> but literally the fact that they have a, a family spice mix, I, that, that, that gets me in my, in my soul. Accessible. That makes me yes. so happy. To hear, like, fam, I've got a family secret, and every month we make our masala mix, and that's our family masala mix. That makes you so happy. So, Brenda, you, you're still there and you're watching. Yes, I know I I'm watching in awe as well. Do you have any further questions for Chef Clem that you may have as he goes through the process? We just okay, chatted about the pickle you know, as well, but what do you think? People add all kinds of little things to their sauces. So, I just want to know, um, some people like it like to be a little bit runny and others like a nice, like a sauce, you know? It yeah. doesn't be too thin. So, I'd like to know what he adds in. So, Great I, I like the question because I, I do like a, a runny uh, um, pickle fish sauce. Um, can I pick it up there with that uh, cross bun, you oh. know, get it all in there. Yes, Some people please. do prefer a thicker sauce. Um, so yeah. I get, get, I'm, I'm like on, the, on the runny level. If you do want to make a thicker sauce, what you do is you make your, your whole pickle and you get your fish in there and you actually take some of that pickling liquid out, just a ladle of it, and you put it into a bowl with corn flour. Just a little bit, a yes. little bit of corn flour, and you mix it through. That's called a slurry. Then when you make yes. your slurry, you pour it back into your pickling liquid, bring it up to a simmer again, and you see it start tightening up. Yeah. But again, do this at a teaspoon of corn flour at a time. And when you add it to your yeah. mixture, which you're gonna add some, you're gonna add liquid to that, to that slurry, add it back yeah. a teaspoon at a time. Because once it sets up on you, you're gonna have to add more liquid to it. So do it like a little bit at a time to get that perfect consistency. Again, I say I like a more liquidy curry. And um, that, that's me. I know some people like it thick, like a porridge. I've had that before. Yeah. Hey, no, it's not my favorite. A porridge of, like a, uh, uh, of pickle. No. Yeah, Brenda, I agree yeah. with you. When you said ha ah, that's exactly what's in my mind. I was like, no, <laughs> don't give me pickled fish porridge. Man. But I also, uh, but you know, I Bre let people Bre do their thing. Brenda, thank you so much for, uh, for giving us your question. Please follow the recipe. Now, yeah. Jesse's going to help us out too. And have a beautiful Easter this weekend. And the recipe is going to be on the website for you. Go check it out. So, can I just talk about the spices? Okay, thank you, you very do? much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks Thank for you. calling. All right, okay, Jesse, you need to you. jump in here. Okay. Uh, you know that... Uh, so do you eat pickled fish? Because I know that some people, 12 years old you are, or they're like, no to pickled fish. Are you in? No. Are you not in? No. Do you what? eat pickled fish? No. No! Earlier you told me sometimes. Okay, but, but chefs claims pickled fish. Can I tell you, that's gonna a different ball You're going to try it. This is a different level. Okay. But please, jump in here and you can make this one. You can. This is ginger that can go in there. You can give you this to help you get it in there. Ginger goes in, garlic goes in. I've added a plethora of spices in there. The turmeric went in because that's that signature yellow yes. color, color. The coriander seeds went in. My favorite herb of all time, bay leaves. Bay leaves. Bay leaf. You know bay what leaf. I say, hey? They're unbelievable. Unbelievable. Honestly. Wow. Thank you. Love it. I'm here for you. Love it. Always. Jesse's not even. Jesse's, he's like, he's, 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 just, he's no, just there now. He's stirring the pot slowly. You know, just thinking about the next liner. <laughs> the but, next liner. Oh, he's coming. Your ginger and garlic. Yes, sir. Uh, price wise, or how are we looking these days? Are they still okay? Price wise, for Why? ginger and garlic. Tell me. Yeah, oh. I, I just I went through the roof last year. Price-wise, given the fact that people were making their own sort of immuno recipes at home. Right, I think it's kind of stabilised So now? it's stabilised, thank yeah. goodness. Bring back the ging ginger garlic, it's fine. Okay, that's okay. It that's is. That's good. As long as the, the prices are good, we can add it in. Absolutely. Okay. So what else is going in there? So, I've added all the spices, like I said, the coriander seeds, quite kind of important. You want to have that in there, you're going to get the... And those balls just roll off, don't worry. If you bite it every now and then, it's okay. It's not like cardamom, cardamom, yo, oh. you bite on that, you're done. You're done, come back next year, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> So it's fine, but that's not in there. If you do, actually, in our all spice mix, which you add in as well, that's yes. a bit of that is ground up in there. And you can grind it up and avoid that, like, that grenade going off in your mouth. Okay, onions going in. And again, what we do with the onions, um, we don't slice them too thin or too thick. You don't want to do it too thin because then it just disappears and becomes a stringy all onion. Right. You don't want that. And too thick and it's just <coughs> chewing on onions. It's okay, we got that. You can add your onions in and you can let those onions cook until they soften. Can I give you a hand? Are you good? You can go straight into the pot. All right. So... While we're doing that, I believe this phone needs to ring again. Can we multitask something? Can we do that? What? Did you see that my, my premonition? It's amazing. How should I answer? Go for it. Which accent? Um, Scottish. I broke the phone. How are you doing? Colony hotline bling. How can I help you? Hello? Hello. I'm sorry. Chef Tim said I should do a Scottish accent to say hello to you. Just wanted to say hello. Have... You have a problem there? <laughs> Not at all. Liquor. Right, uh, do you have a question for Chef Clem? Please feel free. Yes, I have got. I would like to know in connection with bread. Whenever I bake bread and I put it in the oven, 
it rises, but the inside of it is not, it's still raw. What can I do? It rises. And then do you get, do you get a crust on your bread? Yes, yes, I do. A but the inside is still raw. Yes. Okay, so well, baking. Is an inside. Yeah, baking is so, so specific and it's such a science. I was going to check on Jesse. Jesse, are you okay? Oh, yeah, he's, got, he's it. got it. And then ovens on top of that, no two, you can buy exactly the same oven and put them side by side, the two, two ovens, and they will perform differently. And especially if you're baking and you're, being, you're an avid baker, what you do when you get the first thing is get an internal thermometer that hangs inside your oven. And what I do, if you've, if you've got a 60 centimeter like we do over here, uh, if you have a 90 centimeter, what I do is I put the thermometer on the left side, yeah. I put a 180 and I see what it actually reads, then I put it on the right side, I set a 180 and see what it reads. Because you'll see that your oven will actually have hot spots. You'll have a hotter side and a cooler side. That allows you to then understand what side, if you're going to be proving a bread or if you're baking a bread, it'll allow you to see where the hotter spot of your oven is. That's your oven. The second thing is when you're proving your bread, it's important that you prove your bread twice. The first time is to activate the yeast and to give you that first rise. And then you knock it back mm -hmm. and then you fold it in and you put it into your bread dish and it has to rise again. That second time of the rising is also going to give that initial shape. It's going to rise up beautifully and it's, it's going to get those fermented bubbles inside. It's going to make it airy. Then, Please. pop your, when you put your bread into the oven, it's important to keep an eye on it. Because now, even though it's risen, it's going to rise again. And I say the temperature for bread is always 180 for safety. There's certain breads like a brioche where you can actually bake yeah. it at 200 degrees, but 180 for safety is always what you need for the bread. If your bread starts to rise and brown, but the inside of your bread is still doughy, you take a piece of foil and you tent it over your bread, shiny side up this time. We never do shiny side up because it reflects heat away. Yeah. By doing shiny side up, we're going to have a slow, mm -hmm. constant temperature that's going to bake the inside of your bread without your outside of the bread turning browner. You know I can talk a lot. Yes, you can. But that should wow. save you, <laughs> and that way you will have the most perfect buns, breads, bakes, muffins, cupcakes, banana loaf, almond loaf, anything. <laughs> Follow those steps. Also, oh. that, that, that should save you. It's a lot, I know. But you can go to YouTube, and you can go back, and you can get all those tips that I've just given now. You can pause them as you need to, to write them. I know those aunties are up. The pencil is going. There we go. Go back to YouTube and get it out. Thank you so much for your question. I hope that helped a lot. Thank you and very much. No, thank it's you. Sorry about the Scottish accent me. earlier. You can take our lives, but you never take our color on your hotline. <laughs> bling, ting, ting, ting. Uh, have yourself a fantastic <laughs> morning, and thanks a lot. Also, thank thanks you. to Jesse, the 12 year in the kitchen. You've been amazing. Pickled fish going. Chef Clem, always incredible. And if you have any of those requests, any of those culinary conundrums, make sure you call the, this particular phone and Expresso Facebook page. And if you want any recipes, expressoshow.com. We got your back.